Well, the Pentagon denying a CBS report that it has suspended the program that trains and equips Syrian rebels to fight ISIS, despite revelations that just a handful of U.S. trained fighters remain on the battlefield and some of those rebels gave their weapons to al-Qaeda-linked militants, Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy, a Democrat, is now calling for an end to the program, saying it was destined to fail from the start. Meantime, there's new reaction to President Obama's meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin, where they discussed their opposing views on the Syrian war. Here's former House Speaker Newt Gingrich. I think we're seeing a uh, continuing collapse of the Obama policy. You now have Russia firmly in Syria. You have Russia, Iran, and Iraq working together with Syria. All these are things that uh, three or four years ago the president would have deeply opposed, and now he's going to have to accommodate a reality that he can't change. I think what you're seeing is a tremendous shift of power away from the United States and Western Europe towards Russia and Iran, and it's a strategic defeat, a, a very dramatic defeat in historical terms. Okay, so Kennedy, I know there's a number of Republicans who they keep looking back in that rearview mirror, coulda, shoulda, woulda, we should have armed the rebels, we should have done all this stuff. The reality is Putin has stepped up. He's decided to use air power to try and defeat ISIS in Syria. I guess my question to Newt Gingrich and others would be, okay, if you don't support that, in Putin wiping out ISIS so that they don't fill a vacuum if Assad goes out. What are you proposing that we do? Put men and women on the ground in Syria? No, and, and I think that was one of the points that Rand Paul made during the second debate. It's actually possible for both sides of the civil war to be evil. So you know, what, what do we expect the outcome to be for the United States? You know, you, you train perhaps moderates, maybe not. Is there a vetting process? Like, how can you possibly know whether or not someone's allegiance is going to shift in the middle of the, the entire process? Because I have to say, it's not World War II. It's not the Allies versus the Axis. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and the fact that we can't possibly get a handle on what people's motivations are when they join one side or another, and we assume that we're going to arm them and they're going to behave rationally because that's what we really, really want? Right. I mean, both sides are bad, Dr. Keith, but we have to ask ourselves, what is in the best interest of the United States of America? And ISIS taking over Syria is, to me, far worse, filling that vacuum that they have in, in Libya and other countries, than Assad, even though he's a bad guy, staying. Well, absolutely. But this started when Barack Obama didn't leave a presence in Iraq, uh, made critical decisions of the wrong kind. And I'm tired of hearing actually very intelligent guys. Newt Gingrich, genius, right? Mm. We could add him as president. Unbelievable that we and did. And Callista with the French Compared to this guy. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> um, but, you know, here's the thing. It's not that the president has failed. I believe the president wants American leadership to decline. I believe he wants our influence in retreat. He hasn't failed. He's succeeded. Why can't people wake up and understand that the president doesn't want American influence in these nations? So the, the, the rise of influence of the Soviets and others is what he had in his heart. Well, I had a chance. Right along. I spoke with Newt Gingrich this morning on the Fox Business Network, and he stood by many of the words that he said in this same interview. And he went on, by the way, to your point, uh, doctor, saying, I think Putin is saying that he's going to make sure that Assad survives as a dictator. He's going to cooperate actively with the Iranians, and he's going to increasingly sell weapons to the Iraqis. I mean, he went on and on. We're not saying that the... It, it, he, the president just needs to acknowledge that the, his policy in Syria has been a failure and tell us what the strategy is going forward. That's what we're still missing, right? We, we need to acknowledge that it's not saying, working. But change Paris, that. There's a CBS report that's saying that we're not going to train these fighters anymore. We trained the fighters, by the way, at $100 million per fighter. Five of them. Five. And they handed over their weapons. They're saying they didn't want to. To al-Nusra. Five million dollars to five hundred million to give our weapons to terrorists. It wasn't you. enough. That's more than the plan. <laughs> <Parenthood> <laughs> in makes. terms of our ability to train and pick sides and all of that, one name for you, Osama bin Laden. We trained him too. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I understand the two sides and all of that. But, I mean, ISIS is what it is. We have to knock them out. But to go into Syria and try to pick sides, it's difficult now, two years later. <laughs> The vetting process, as Kennedy pointed to, is almost impossible at this point. We'll move on. Two weeks from today, the first debate for the Democrats running for president. At this point, these are the people we could see on that stage that night. You're whistling. Is that for me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but is this new? 
Well, if Vice President Joe Biden decides to get into the race, that would be interesting. He will be allowed to participate. It's not too late for him. Even if he declares his <laughs> candidacy for the White House like 15 minutes before it starts, we'll talk about it. There's new polling that shows if Biden jumps in, by the way, he'll be the most popular candidate among the top tier of both political parties. His positives top those of both Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. On the Republican side, he fares better than any of the top three, Donald Trump, Ben Carson, or Carly Fiorina. Wow. Hmm? You're, you're nodding. Why? Uh, I, thought, I thought I was shaking my head. If I was nodding, then I need to see my therapist. But, um, <laughs> but oh, you have one? <laughs> or a good neck doctor. Oh, yeah, you have you've, one? Got, you've got to have one if you, if you hope to do battle with free? the demons inhabiting the human breast. <laughs> do you like breast. barter for system? No. Let's um, get back to yeah, the point. So, um, yeah, no, so here's the thing. I, I think that it, now uh, people can embrace him. He's, he's suffered this terrible loss of his son. He's the vice president of the United States. Of course he's going to be a popular guy. When, I think it, when it comes time to real debate, I wouldn't want that to be my candidate if I were the Democrats. I'd be deeply di disappointed mm. that that's the best Why? we could do. Because I think that he doesn't inspire tremendous confidence. Um, I think that uh, many people feel him to be uh, not at the top of his game, um, to perhaps not be able to craft because of the leadership. Grief? No, 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 not because of the grief. I think that's why people are flocking to him to mm, some extent. He has, and I know, look, it's, a, it's an incredible loss. I'm going to say something controversial. He, what? You? He has not shied away from talking about that loss in the context of his decision to run. Listen, it would be an enormous effort for me to overcome this grief for the American people. You're paraphrasing Okay, Vice you're President getting Biden. a little bit close to using that event to justify you running. It makes me a little uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, Sandra? Sensitive subject. I keep reading it is in fact i keep reading that nobody is ever as popular as right before they jump into a race. exactly so right this is this popularity at this moment yeah. because he's Apex not in top. the race right so everybody loves the idea of somebody new entering into the race that has been quite stale on the democratic side for quite some time right and hillary's been so inevitable uh and so to think about uh, just even think about Biden entering the race, it entertains everybody just a little bit. He has all kinds of lies in his past that are going to come out. The guy fabricated all kinds of things about his achievements. So that's all going to come back. You know what? It's an anything goes election cycle. And I think Joe Biden is going to position himself as the Hail Mary on a white horse. And he is going to come in with a giant sword. He doesn't have to inspire people tremendously. He just has to inspire them enough to yeah. beat whoever well, the I Republican hope, nominee is. Yep. And that race is still very much in all right. flux. I hope so let's they talk do about it. the Republicans for a second. Because when somebody oh. jumps in and it has like that <laughs> ripple effect on one side, that's one thing. <laughs> But if he's really doing better than the top three, you know, on the Republican side, it matters or no? Here's how it helps Republicans. It takes the pressure off them a little bit because now there's actually choice and competition off the on the left, which I love seeing choice and competition when it comes to Democrats. Um, but I want to I want to stay with something that you said, um, Dr. Keith. You talked about Biden potentially using the death or the grief. How how much of a pass do people give him for that? Because Hillary Clinton has, has also brought up repeatedly her deceased mother. We saw in the interview that she did just a couple weeks ago. It doesn't seem to be working. Would it work with someone like Biden, even though, as you mentioned, he's part of a very incompetent administration? Well, it, it doesn't work with me because I get the willies from it. Like when you're on a late night talk show, and you start talking about how, you know, I don't know if I can really do this, you know, because I'm so, you know, weighed down by grief. Well, then don't talk about it and don't do it, but have these quiet moments at home. Um, it, it seems like positioning. Uh, so that, and now a very sh quick shift, we're not electing a president with a visible hair transplant. But That's not going to happen. <laughs> Okay, oh so I okay. hope he runs because mm. we are not going to do that. that. The plugs a... are visible. Mm. Doctor, That's the Dr. end. Dr. A, it. there's an opportunity to move on to something else. Oh, yeah, let's well, let's talk about the plugs. I would not get plugs. Uh, Look at some, me. Some you parents, can trust me. Some parents in one state are not happy yeah. about the public middle school curriculum, which is teaching Islam to their children, what the school is saying, and why the parents are pushing back. The big controversial um, statement was that Allah was the same God that Christians and Jews worship.